Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And um, yeah, something a bit more straightforward than yesterday today, I hope. Um, oh no, actually yesterday was very, no, the day before is what I'm thinking of, I think. This one has arrows and a few crop key dots. Uh, it's by Akash Dulani, who's been a long time correspondent of the channel, publishes his own Sudoku books, and um, they're not too hard a standard in case you're looking for material like that, check them out on Amazon. But uh, he is a very good constructor, and he's sent us in this one to have a go at on the channel, and that's what I'm going to do today. Now, tomorrow, today is the International Leap Year Day, so very happy Leap Day to you. 29th of February, only comes around every four years. Um, and tomorrow, though, more importantly, perhaps, for us, is the first of the month. So on Patreon, we'll be publishing a new Sudoku hunt. It's called Evening Attractions. Um, it features a number of, well, seven puzzles. And they are themed around negative constraints, which is something that interests people quite a lot whenever we do puzzles involving them. So do check them out. There's some very inventive and um, new kinds of stuff there. So check it out on Patreon. Join us on Patreon. If you haven't already, it's a great day to do it. And all our $2 and above patrons will be able to enter the competition. It'll be open until the 20th of March. And um, good luck to you. The instructions are all in the document. Um, that you will see at 4 p.m. our time tomorrow, and you'll have till 4 p.m. on the 20th to enter. So there's always loads of extra content on Patreon. There's always all of our apps, which include Domino Sudoku and Arrow Sudoku, if you like, this puzzle by Akash, um, in those styles. So check those out. Sven Sudoku Pad on merchandise, all on the links under the video. But the first link is to this puzzle, which is called Mirrored. And if we draw a line of symmetry down the grid there, you will see that all of the markings in the grid are mirrored exactly except for one, which is a relief because otherwise this would be a transposable puzzle with at least two solutions. But that arrow is not an exact mirror of that one because the circles are at opposite ends. That's fascinating. That is, I suspect this is a real feat of construction by Akash. Anyway, looking forward to giving it a go. I am going to go through the rules and then have a go. So, normal Sudoku rules apply. We're gonna put one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box in the puzzle. Uh, digits in cells connected by a white dot are consecutive digits, and those in cells connected by a black dot have a one to two ratio. None of the dots are actually on arrows here, I notice. Digits along an arrow sum to the number in the attached circle. So those three will add up to this circle digit here. They could be repeats in those three. Um, give it a try. Those are the rules. No given digits. Should be fun. I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. And I'm just going to stick six, seven, eight or nine in there because those three digits see each other. So, so they must be um, at least one, two, and three. Now, if they were one, two, and three, that black dot would be a four, eight dot. This would be a six. And the whole thing would be impossible because you'd then have five, seven, and nine left to put in those cells and you couldn't find a consecutive pair out of five, seven, nine, because they're all odd. So that's not six. Now, if it was seven, I'm gonna try that. One, two, four, seven. This black dot now would have to be three, six. Then you could put eight, nine on the white dot and five here, and that just works. So maybe it was six's evenness that was the bigger problem. If we put eight here, this might be one, two, five, going to an eight. Then this will have to be three, six. And then you can't make up the white dot from four, seven, nine. So alternatively, one, three, four, going to the eight. And that doesn't leave a black dot pair because only two and six are left out of the black dot possible digits. So that's not an eight. So even this was a problem, this had to be odd. Right, I'm going to think again, 
Now, I'm going to go maybe the other way. Let's try 1, 3, 5 and 9. They're all the odd digits, well, apart from 7, which must go on the white dot. 9, 1, 3, 5, a 7 up there. Oh, no, there's lots of ways to do that. This could be 2, 4 or 4, 8. I think this could be as little as 6, comfortably. Yeah, these, these arrows that run through multiple boxes, you could actually put 1, 1, 1 on those without creating a clash. And the only reason this can't be a 3, therefore, is because you couldn't put 1, 1, 1 on both arrows. Anyway, um, 9, 1, 3, 5 definitely works. I suspect... Ah, oh, 9, 2, 3, 4 doesn't. Because 2, 3 or 4 would have to go on the black dot. So does 9, 1, 2, 6, I'm going to consider the last combo, 9, 1, 2, 6, this dot would be a 4, 8 pair, and then you couldn't make up the white dot out of 3, 5, 7. That's really interesting. So if this is 9, this is 1, 3, 5, and if it's 7, it's 1, 2, 4. And those aren't combinations I was expecting to come across here. Now, if it's 9, 1, 3, 5, what did we say about this? Oh, I think there were two ways to do it. It would either be 2, 4 or 4, 8. Ah, hang on though. If this was 9, 1, 3, 5, where does 2 go in the column? It doesn't go here, and it doesn't go here because it doesn't have one or three available. So if that's 9, 1, 3, 5, this is a 2, 4 pair. Now, if it's 7, 1, 2, 4, this was a 3, 6 pair. And then this was an 8, 9, and this was a 5 if it was the 7 option. 5's very low, actually. We'll think about that in a moment. If this was the 9 option with 1, 3, 5, 2, 4 here... Oh, then this could be anything from 6, 7, 8. Oh, that is a shame. Well, it would involve the 7, so this would be 6 or 8. Right, now I'm going to consider whether this cell can be a 5. Now, that would require all of these digits together. Two arrows going to a 5 circle have to add up to 10 at a minimum. And that's only one away from the absolute minimum of 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. So each row would have to have a 1. I think it could be done. That's a shame. I was hoping to rule 5 out of that, and then we would know that the, the 7, 1, 2, 4 option didn't work. Now, I don't know, I may have been neglecting other things that work much better in this puzzle, but that's what I've been focusing on, as you can tell, so far. I'm going to have to try and find something else. Box 2, slightly interesting. See, these do have to be fair. Okay, what digits can we put on these arrows? And I'm going to say, okay, we can't put a 7 on them. We might not even be able to put a 6 on them. Let me just think about that. The minimum pair here is a 1-2 pair, because they're in the same box. Then the minimum pair here, well, the maximum pair adds up to 7. No, it doesn't. It adds up to 6, to put a 9 in this circle with 3 there. The maximum pair adds up to 6, and that must be the same for this symmetrical arrow. So you can't use 6, 7, 8, or 9 on these arrows. And therefore, 6, 7, 8, 9 are a quad in this box. It was worth pencil marking that central arrow to find that out. Now, where do 6, 7, 8, 9 go in this column? Ooh. One of them goes there. Two of them go there. And that's going to have used up both the odd digits. The even digits, and there's one left. The one, of the, one of the even digits is here. Actually, yes, if, it's, if this is a 6-7 pair, using the 6 as the even digit, that's a 9. And then the even digit goes here. The 
sorry, the other even high digit goes here, that's an 8, which I think is a very plausible solution, and that's a 2-4 pair. Um, if this doesn't use 6, then that's a 7-8-9 triple, and this is 6. So it's never 5 because of 6, 7, 8, 9. Let me just work out if that's really right. So the way that this was going to be 5 was if this was 7 with 1, 2, 4 here, and 8, 9 there, and 6, 3 here, and 5 there. So why did I just rule that out? Probably because I'm a Muppet. I don't think I can rule that out. And I don't know that I'm actually getting anywhere thinking about this, so I'm going to stop for a moment. I'm going to at least mentally consider that one of those is even and one of those is odd because the same is true here. Now, these pairs, we worked out the maximum they could add up to is 6. But the minimum number, the minimum total of these four cells is 10, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the maximum total is 12 because the most either can add up to is 6. So they add up to somewhere between 10 and 12. And they must have a 1 on. And they must have a 2 on because even four digits that add up to 12 is either 1, 2, 3, 6 or 1, 2, 4, 5. So 1 and 2 in the box are in those cells and not here. Um, now, if they did add up to 12, it's not going to work, is it? Because these are both going to be 1, 2 pairs, and we're going to get to a total of 18 on the two arrows, and those are both going to be 9s, and they would clash. So these, sorry, that was, yeah, that is right. So actually, the most these can add up to now is 11. So they're either 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 5, and they include a 3 now, and that's not a 3 there. So this is either the 4 with a 1, 2 pair here, or a 5. No, hang on. Yes, this is either 1, 2... 1, 3, 5, or 1, 2, 4. So they don't include 4 and 5 anymore. Hmm. I mean, this is good progress. We're not quite cracking through, are we? So if these add up to 11, 1, 2, 3, 5, and these add up to the maximum 17, then these are left being a 1, 2 pair on both sides, which I think is possible. If these add up to 12, no, if these add up to 10, that's the alternative, 1, 2, 3, 4, then these could be a 1, 2 and a 1, 3. There's only one degree of freedom along here, so this pair is either 9, 8 or 9, 7. The circle pair. Oh, this is really interesting, but I'm not quite getting it. Uh, the 1 will go with the high digit, I suppose. The 4 or the 5. Does, no, that might not be necessary. 2 and 4. Yeah, no, 2 and 4 would work with a 1, 3. No, with a 1, 2 there, making 9. Then the other side could be 1, 3. I mean, it's complicated, but, but it, it all seems to just about hang together, so... I can't make a ruling on that now. If that's a 5, that's not. OK, let's think about this being a 5 again. OK, let's think about this being a 5 in the light of these cells. I think these have to be selected from 1, 2 and 3, and I might pencil mark that. So these add up to 10 or 11, and these add up to 16 or 17. So these add up to 6 or 7, and in each row you've either got 1, 2, or 1, 3. In each row you're using a 1 for definite. So those can't be 1 cells, because one of these must be a 1. 
So I'm even going to pencil mark those in the boxes. Hmm. Now, I was going to then think about these. If those both had to use ones as well, maybe it's not a problem. I mean, it pushes the value of these arrows up a bit, interestingly. What if this was eight then, and these arrows added up to 16, the maximum it could be? There is quite a, quite a lot of freedom about that, so that's probably not what I need to be thinking about. Sadly for me. Um, ah, okay. These two cells on this crazy arrow, on the on the non-symmetrical arrow. So this might be where we get a bit of a break in. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm just wildly guessing at the moment. This could be a one-three pair. So the minimum these two can add up to. Ah, the minimum that those two can add up to is not six, which I was about to allege, because then this would use one, two, three, four. And what would you put on the black dot? You've got to put a low digit on the black dot. So if that was one, three, this could be two, five. That's the absolute minimum, seven. So this is again one or two, and this is eight or nine in the circle. And this pair, I'm hoping to allege that they must use a 2 now. But maybe not. Maybe that's a 3. Oh, no. There might be quite a lot of freedom around that. Well, no, it can't be a 3-4 pair, because, again, we need to leave a low digit here. It could be 3-5. There must be a low digit on this. It can't be 4 and 5. That's too much. So, these are from 1, 2, 3. The low digit here is not from 1, 2, 3, or that would be a 4, 5 pair, and that's too much, because 4, 5 plus the minimum number there gives us 10. So the digit on here is not from 1, 2, 3. The low digit is 4, and that is a 4, 8 pair now. Now, the low digit here is from 1, 2, 3, and the next digit is not a 4. So this is at least 2 and 5, which is actually what I said before. It's either 2, 5, 2, 6, or 3, 5. I think that's right. And those add up to at least 7. These add up to at least 3. So we've got 10... They can't actually add up to only 10 because 4 is not being used in these 4 cells. So they must add up to at least 11. These add up to at most 17. So the maximum for these is a total of 6. And that's not as helpful as I'd hoped. Oh, we're getting somewhere, though. This is really interesting. Um, oh, we've also used four and eight, two even digits there. We're going to need another even here, which is either two or six. Hmm. Now, if eight is on that white dot, we've got an X-wing on eights. Eight can't go there, so it would have to go here. Ah, there's some, um, there must be a double or triple or something going on now that I, I'm not seeing. That's from one, two, three, and that is. So either this is a one, two, three, triple. It can't be a one, two, three, triple. That's very interesting. I was just gonna say, either this is a one, two, three, triple, if that's the low digit on this arrow, or this is a 1, 2, 3 triple, if that's the low digit. Now I'm going to tell you why 1, 2, 3 can't be the lows here. Because where would you put 1, 2, and 3 in this box? They couldn't now go there or there. And they would all have to be crammed into two cells. So that is not low. 
these are definitely from 1, 2, and 3. And these include either 2 or 3 and either 4 or 5. Wow. OK, so the 1, 2, 3 virtual triple is made up. Yeah, anyway, this is now low. And now here's our 1, 2, 3 triple that we are making up. Oh, does one of those have to be two, which would take out one of them, another of the even digits from column one? Don't think so. That could be one, three with a five there. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's getting interesting. It's, I love how this uh, works itself out. Right, one, two, three have been used up there. This digit is four, five, or six now. And the maximum these can add up to is 4 to let a 9 in there. In Oh, I was about to say, where does 9 go in this row? But I've just noticed it could be there as well as there. It's not on the black dot. Now, let's think about the black dot a little bit. We've used 1 here. So the low, well, we could put a 2, 4 on the black dot. I think we could still put 3, 6 on it which is actually fairly likely. Well, interesting. OK, didn't we say we've used up the 1, 2, 3 triple in this row here? So if there is a digit from 2 or 3 on this, it's up here. And that would be higher and would be 4 or 6. However, this could be a 4, 8 pair and in that case, I think it could be in either order. It can't be 1, 2. It could be 2, 4, and we know the order. It could be 3, 6, and we know the order. Or it's 4, 8, and we don't know the order. Now, on a, on a kind of um, uniqueness basis, I think it's a bit unlikely to be 4, 8 because of the 4, 8 pair over there. But I have to allow it because we are proving solvability. We are proving the uniqueness of the solution as well as finding that solution. So we have to allow that to be possible. Now, this is a minimum of seven. Now that's a minimum of four. That could be a one, two pair. So this is seven, eight or nine. Yeah, whoa, that's interesting. Yeah, it's hard to find homes for all of all of the digits in this row, frankly, to put it that way. Um, and this didn't have to have a load. This could be 4, 8 as a pair. In which case, this would be at least 5. This would now have to be 9. That would become 6 or 7. Oh, it's really f interesting. I was going to say fiddly to, to work out quite what's going on. And I'm not quite getting there. We've got that one, two, three, triple. Four in the row could be any of those positions. Now, can this be a four? This would have to be a three, six pair. That would be one, two. We'd have four, three, six, one, two... Five, seven, eight, nine to place. Oh, there must be some interaction with the rest of the grid. And I'm really annoyed that I haven't been able to see anything going on with these arrows at all. And I haven't. I have occasionally glanced at them. And I haven't figured them out. Um, right. We've got a lot marked up. I suspect I haven't done quite enough thinking about these arrows. What's going on with them? These numbers add up to no more than 17. And these to no more than 8 on this left arrow. That's 25.
Yeah, that's 25. The most I can put, I'm just going to colour those cells. The most I can put in this row is a 1, 2. The most in this row is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That takes us up to 18. And the most here, 1, 2, 3. That takes us up to 24. There is still only one degree of freedom. And that could either come from one of those being a 7, that being a 2, that being an 8, or it could be dropped out of one of these cells from their absolute minimum. And if it wasn't dropped here, that would be a 1-2 pair. That would be 5. That would be a 1-2 pair. That would be a 3-4 pair. That would be 2 to keep it to its minimum. That would be 1. This would be 3. And this would be 1. Yeah, there's only one way to keep those to their minimum and take the degree of freedom out of these cells. Oh, this can't be a 2. There's my first digit. If this was a 2, that would be a 3, and we'd already be up to a minimum 10 on this arrow. So that's a 1, and we don't lose the degree of freedom there. But we do get to place the 1 on this arrow, which is either 1, 3, 5, or 1, 2, 4. So these two cells are the same parity. I think I've known, well, I've known there would be two such cells all the time. That doesn't really solve anything. There's also a one in one of these cells now by Sudoku, which is probably not the most interesting discovery I'll make in the puzzle. Oh my goodness. So for that to be a six, I don't, th for some reason, it feels like, no, it, it doesn't work. That, that would work, sorry. Yeah, that would make that a 9. And I was just thinking, did that take two degrees of freedom out? But no, making this a 9 preserves the degree of freedom. It's making one of these a 7 or that an 8 that messes with the degree of freedom, that removes it. I'm very close to cracking this now. Uh, now, there is a 1 on one of those, and there is a 1 in one of these. So one of these arrows has a repeated 1 in. And therefore, on the other arrow, you have 2 or 3 there, and... Oh, no, I don't know. I was going to say 1, 3 in one of these. I strongly feel that those are going to be a 1, 2 pair in both boxes still. So if you preserve the degree of freedom up here, so that is a 1-2 pair. This then, uh, it's either 3-6 or 4-8. That doesn't resolve it. 1-2-3 triple in this box. Everything else is from 5, 6, 7 or 9. I'm going to bother to pencil mark it now. Because I'm not, not getting very far with just my thoughts. I've got two digits done. I'm not unhappy about that, but it's not exactly stellar. Ah, two can't be the even digit on here. Because if you put a two on there, that becomes a three, and then the two has no companion. So six is the even digit here. Going with five or seven. Now, maybe I need to add up all of these totals as well. So let's give these a different colour and just see what my minima and maxima are here. So that could now be 2 and 3. It couldn't have a 1 on. These could be 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're up to 15. Let's posit a 1, 2 pair there and a 1, 2 pair there. And we're up to 21 for the total of those two arrows and double that one. That is not the, the calculation that I need. That doesn't really yield anything thrilling for me. However, it's not quite possible for those to be one, two pairs in those rows, because that would put three in both of those cells. Oh, do I have to consider all the yellow and purple arrows together? 
That is an imposition. But it might be worth considering. I mean, I think this is crazy, but I'm going to try adding up all the minimum yellow and purples. And how am I going to do that? Let's posit one, two here in box eight. One, two, three, four there. So we're up to 13. One, two, three, four in that column. One, two, three, four in that column. So we're up to 33. One, two, five there is 41. One, two there is 44. And that being a two is 46. And then the arrow, the circles that we're representing, it's all of these, including the bottom one twice. I don't think that's changed the picture at all. I have to try these things because I don't know what breaks into the puzzle. It wasn't what I was doing there. Right. Um, I do think these are interesting. We've got these black dots to resolve as well. Ah, this one has got a two or a three on. We know that. do want to know what this circle is. If that's been obvious from the get-go, that would be very, very, very annoying indeed. It is possible. Six, three there makes that a seven, eight, nine triple. Makes that a two, four pair and that seven and that five. I think I've known that the whole time. Two, four there makes that three, five, and that nine, and then we have a six, seven, eight, triple. Yeah, there's, nothing has really changed in that calculation that I've been doing again and again. Um, oh my goodness. Ah, oh, one is in one of those cells. Oh, there we go, it's this arrow. They can't have ones on since I got those whole digits. That is a two, three minimum, and therefore also maximum with a four there and a nine there. Here we go. Now this has to be a three, six arrow. Here we go. That's a three in the corner. Hurrah. Losing its religion all over the place. That's a two. This is a three. This is now a one, three, five makes nine. There's the breakthrough. I mean, my goodness, that took me a long time, as you. As you observed full well, that is a 2-4 arrow. We've got a 5 here. So these ones add up to 10. We haven't lost the degree of freedom there, but we've got a 3-4 pair here. So that's a definite 1-2 pair. This has become a 5, still not losing the degree of freedom anywhere. That's 7 or 8. 4-8 pair there. These can't have a 5 in. That's not a three, so again, still preserving the degree of freedom. These are from five, seven, eight. That's not a six. Just trying to tidy up the Sudoku that has been revealed. We get a three in one of those cells by Sudoku again. Oh, I can't believe I just couldn't see that those didn't have a one on. Oh, what's this? The even digit here is an eight. Um, so it's not a one in those, it's a one in one of these. Very unsurprising. X wing there, one and five in fact are both in these cells. Down here, nine is definitely in those. Okay, black dot here is not a one, two or it would break that. It doesn't have a three in, so there is a four in it. Um, and there's a four there, so that's an X-wing, and we can put a four in one of those cells, not in the corner because of the four-eight pair up here. Uh, now, those are all even. Oh, this, can it be six? These would have to add up to 12. I suspect I can't rule that out yet. Not yet. 
but maybe soon. Right, um, let's do some more Sudoku, because thing, things started happening, come on. There's a 4 here, and either 2 or 8. Say that was 2, 4, that would be 1. Hmm, okay, just starting to wonder... Those haven't really given way at all. There's a six on that. Should that help me more than I can see? Oh, that's a seven, eight, nine triple now. So eight is used on the white dot, so that's not an eight. Seven, eight, nine, triple, two, three. These other cells are from one, four, five, six. That's not a one, that's not a one. Now, either that's a 1, or this is a 4-5 pair with a 9 on the circle. If that's a 1, then this is at least 4, and that's at least 2. And in that case, this can't be 6 anymore. So, if the 1 is here, if the 1 is not here, that's a 9. And if the one is here, this is an 8. That's weird. So we've either got a 9 there or we've gone up to 8 here. Now, I'm not quite seeing how to use that yet. 3, 6, 4, 2. We've had an 8 there. These are all odd. 1, 5, 7, 9 are the candidates. Don't know how that works yet. Three one nine here, two four pair. Don't know about that. Don't quite know where five goes. I bet one of these arrows is a four five. This cell. I don't know. Well, neither of these can be a one. I suppose two three at a minimum is what we're looking at. So this is five, six, seven, eight, or nine. This one is at least five as well over that side. So these are probably a one, three pair to keep the arrows low, but probably doesn't get us any credit. Now, this black dot can't use a four because we know four's in one of those cells from this X wing. So the black dot is either a one, two, or a 3-6 black dot. Um, so, if that was a 3, this would be a 1-2 pair, and that digit couldn't be formed. So that is not a 3. 3 must go here in row 6. Ooh, I mean, again... No, I don't know. Now, this cell, if it's not a 2, it's 4, 5, or 6. This is now not a 6. I can do that. I bet this is a 2, but I don't have any proof. This is at least a 2. I have a feeling I could probably prove this is 3, 6 now. If this was 1, 2, that would be a 3. That would be a 2. And the one two pair with a two there would force this to be a two. It's quite interesting. But not conclusive. So it could just be a one two pair. That would be two. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but if that was one two, this would be at least a four. That would be at least a four. And this would be broken. Oh, that's nice. Right, if this was a 1-2 pair, neither of these cells could be 1, 2, or 3 anymore. So they'd be at least 4s each, and by the time you've added something there, you're over 8. So that is a 3-6 pair. I could prove it. That is now a 1-2 pair. This has become a 3. That puts 9 in this circle. Now, we remember from that beginning that one of these had to be 9, and it can't be this one now. So it's this one which has got a pair adding to 3 there. This pair adds to 6 and is 2, 4. That's 3, 1. This arrow, 3, 4, and 
three there, seven. There's the degree of freedom. Everything in yellow was absolutely minimal. And this was the cell that took the degree of freedom. This is now a five, six pair. This is a two, seven, nine triple at the bottom of the column. These are two, four, and eight. And I'm prepared to bet that that's not eight. And that's not eight, because they would both destroy their circles. So that's a two, four pair. That's an eight. These are from four, five, six, I think. Um, this is either five or seven in that circle. Uh, right, two, seven, three, two, seven, nine, three, six. This is from one, four, five, or eight. It could just be a five with a two there. No, it can't, because that can't be a one anymore. In fact, this sees one, three, two, and four. Good Lord. That is five or six. And that's at least two. So this is five. That's two. That's one. Eight in the circle. And I think this whole puzzle is probably done now. We get that is not five, seven, or eight by by the, the magic of, of Sudoku. This is five or six. That must be a one. No, not necessarily. Still, five, four is a possibility there, which surprised me. Um, this digit. Okay, maybe we're not all done, but it, it felt like that was a big breakthrough. This is not nine. Oh, that seven, eight pair has been obvious since I got that. This is a one, five, nine triple. Um, we've got a four on this jobby what's it. Oh, that is a naked eight. Okay. This is a four, five pair. What goes on the white dot then? Um, either three or six, and it can't be three. So we put six there. Seven, five, six, eight, two, four. That's now a nine, and this is a one, three pair. This is even and not four or six or eight. That's two, perhaps predictably. Oh, that's two, because it sees seven and nine in the row. This is now a four, eight pair, and we know the order, and we know the four, two order. And I will look at that last arrow in a moment. I'm just doing a bit of Sudoku first. This is a naked seven. That's a three, six pair. Now, could you put a six there? Actually, yes, with ones either side of it. Um, is there a parity thing to do? Oh, that's a nine now. Right. So five and four there. This is now, that can't be a six because we'd get up to at least nine. So that's a one, unsurprisingly. Let's do the Sudoku that that gives us around boxes three and one. This has become a seven. That's a six, nine pair. Now there has to be a seven on this white dot given the numbers on it. So that's a seven. That's become an eight. That's a four. Uh, these don't use seven. So the seven in this row is there. This is done. It's an eight. That's a five. That's a six. That's a nine, that's a six. This is eight, that's nine. This is all coming together now. Two, four, eight, nine, one, three. Five, six, and seven are a triple, so that's a four. This must be five, actually, there we go. And, oops, and this is a two, eight pair that we know the order of. That sorts out eight, seven, that sorts out seven, six. That sorts out six, five. Now, we've got a 3-6 deadly pattern there. That's fine. We'll get to that. This is a 5, and those aren't. So now it is about this arrow, and given the parity of those two, this has to be even and is 6 after all, which is quite an amusing finding. 6 on one of those arrows was an implausibility early on, but it turns out to be the facts, and there we go. That is the solution. That took me longer than I was expecting, but it's brilliant. I mean, that is a mirrored puzzle. Apart from that one arrow, which is a nine in both circles, it turns out. Maybe that's unsurprising. Beautiful puzzle by Akash and great fun. Do have a go tomorrow at our rather wonderful evening attractions on Patreon. 
And I bid you good night. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.